people don't know about the product until they've already engaged to get them to try your brand over the other before they can determine, you know, that this product is, is better than the other. You have to build that brand awareness. You have to build visibility and you have to have created a position that feels unique in the market. Hi there, very happy to be here. My name is Natasha. I work at Seedcamp. We're a pan-European early stage investor. We've invested in over 400 companies now, including the likes of UiPath, Revolut, WeFox, Wise, Hopin, and, and many other amazing European businesses. And yeah, I focus on how we support our companies post-investment. I think the issue we have, particularly in Europe, is that founders often deprioritize the importance of storytelling, which to me is a huge missed opportunity because fundamentally we're emotional beings. And as much as we think we're driven and inspired by, you know, rational things such as, you know, hard numbers and stats, really we care about stories and emotion and things that enable us to connect with people. And storytelling isn't just a marketing trick. It's something that, you know, is relevant across every single element of our business. It's how we raise capital from investors. It's the story we tell them to get excited about what we're doing. It's the story that we tell to people that we want to hire when we're competing, especially in the early stages for, you know, great talent and we don't necessarily have the credibility and the track record yet, or, you know, frankly, the finances to compete with other organizations being able to compel, tell a compelling story about what it is we're doing is hugely important. And then it's how we get customers and people excited to be on the journey with us. So I really think that we have to start prioritizing the way we tell stories and understand the slightly nuanced stories we need to tell, depending on the different customers that we're speaking to. So look, I don't think the early stage brand build is any different to what happens later stage. Fundamentally, your brand is a foundation. And that's quite simple. It's why is it you exist? Where do you sit in the market? And how do you express yourself? And that is as relevant at the beginning to when you're a 30, 40, 50 year old business. The thing that's important is that that might evolve and change. So it's understanding in the early part of the journey, you know, really defining your, your North Star, why it is you're doing what it is you're doing, why that's important, how are you positioned differently to everybody else? How are you gonna get those early adopters on board? And then how do you communicate in a way that's gonna excite them and make you stand out from everybody else? So I think the real missed opportunity here is that people do lots of customer insight and research gathering, but they often fail to really listen to what their customers are telling them. And not just to listen, but actually to repeat back. So one of the things I always really suggest to companies that I work with is, actually when it comes to the language and the stories that you're wanting to tell to customers, use the language that they're using to you back at them. And that's something that clearly that they're feeling because they're telling you it. So often the thing that seems most obvious and is right in front of our face is the thing that we neglect to do. So I think it's super basic, but something I would definitely recommend people pay attention to. I think it really comes back to the foundational element and then just really refining and defining your positioning. So that is, where do you sit in the market? What does the landscape around you look and sound like? And where is there a window of opportunity for you to create something different? In some markets, frankly, it can be that you have lots of me too businesses and there are lots of similar type things that exist. In that sort of space, why is somebody gonna choose this one over here versus this one over there? And that really is where brand plays such a critical part. People don't know about the product until they've already engaged to get them to try your brand over the other before they can determine, you know, that this product is, is better than the other. You have to build that brand awareness. You have to build visibility and you have to have created a position that feels unique in the market. And that's just as important for B2B companies as it is for B2C. So I think the thing that's really exciting is that success breeds success. And we've seen amazing success from Eastern Europe over the last decade, whether that's founders like UiPath and Daniel Dines or Tavern and Christo at Wise, 
And the thing that's incredibly exciting now is the next generation of entrepreneurs who've been inspired or even part of those journeys are building businesses. And you have this amazing trickle down effect. And I think that the growth and potential and future businesses we're going to see from Eastern Europe are only going to get more exciting. And we're very passionate about supporting those businesses and those founders at Seekin.